Hey, this is Michael from Dr. Quality. You're watching Impact Channel. Hi everyone, our guest today is Mika Sana from Dark Tranquility. Hello. Hey! Welcome to Hungary first. Thank you very much. Uh, how is it to be nailed to obscurity? Oh, it's been awesome. Um, we've been. This is the 31st show, I think, or 32nd mm -hmm. in a row, which has been crazy. Um, most of the tour has been together with Amon Amarth, so we've been supporting them, and then we've done headline shows in between, and then uh, they went home a week ago or two weeks ago and then we continue so this is a um, really extensive tour so really intense to shows every day it's um, um, we had Omnium Gatherum with us for a long time and then but then they return home and now it's just us and to Obscurity and those are awesome guys that I know and I love their band so it's it's really really cool it's been great like uh, it's tough to <laughs> to go for this long but it's it's also uh, I've seen some amazing amazing crowds Met a lot of amazing people and um, we had a blast. So it's it's great to hear. Fantastic. Uh, who was your favorite tour partner since you formed the band? Favorite band to tour with? Holy shit! Like, Omnium Gatherum, I we toured with so many times, and Insomnium as well. <coughs> we had a blast touring together with Sentenced. Mm -hmm. uh, we toured in America with a band called Enforcer from Stockholm. Mm -hmm. They were amazing people so that we really love we had a, such an incredible time with them um, but I think it mostly it's it's Finnish people for some reason <laughs> like we always talk with Finnish bands obviously there are 200,000 Finnish bands but we talked with Swallow the Sun last year and that was great as well so it's I don't know Finnish bands seems to we seem to kind of really really get along and have the same kind of feeling to it mm -hmm. do you know the other support bands uh, Watch My Dying I do not I have no, I never heard of them actually, but I will check them out. Are they good? They are. Oh, cool. All my favorite bands from Hungary. Mm. Wow, fantastic. Then I'll check it out. And do you have a funny tour story to share with us? <sighs> it's hard. Um, I mean, everything it just blurs together because we've been doing this for such a long time. Mm. Of course, there's tons of stuff that, you know, that just happens, but I, I don't really get surprised or, you know, you hardly pay attention. Everything is just, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's, it really is like being on like camp when you're a kid, you know, because yeah. you can do anything and nobody cares and you just have to do the stupidest things and it's fine, you know, because yeah, you're on tour. Like, no, it's, and it's just, you're just with your closest friends. So, um, school trip without teachers. That's exactly what it is. Sure, we have a tour manager, but he is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it's, I don't know, like, we sometimes kind of swap stories, you know, the the old days, you know, wherever, that stupid stuff that happened, but mm -hmm. it's, most of it, it's not really for public um, knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the craziest fan you ever met? Craziest fan? Whoa. We have a really, really crazy fan, but she's awesome. Um, she lives in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and she has seen more than 130 shows. How come 130 shows? She travels everywhere. She's been on, to America to see us. She's been to Sweden. She's been all over Europe. And when we play Japan, she sees every single show. So 100, more than 130. I, I'm not sure exactly the number, but yeah, she, she's uh, the most dedicated, I think. She travels alone just to see us. And wow. I've, we've gotten to know her very well, and she's mm -hmm. awesome. But it's it, the, like the first couple of years, she didn't speak a word of English. Mm -hmm. And so she we could never talk, but now she, that's pretty good, and she also speaks some Swedish. But um, Nadi, she's she's pretty incredible. She will come like and she doesn't tell us, so she just shows up. She's like, hey, <laughs> like the most random places in the world, like we're in Vegas or something like that. And all of a sudden, like she's come uh, walking down the street, and it's like what? Fuck. So it's it's really cool. Like she's the best. And what was the most remarkable feedback you ever got from a fan? Feedback. Oh wow! Mo the most recent, I think, like that. I really, really um, live loved. It's a guy in uh, I met in Spain. Um, we took 
he showed me pictures. Like we we met many many times and just you know hung out, took pictures. But he said he he'd been um, suffering from cancer for for four years. Like went to like four years of therapy and chemotherapy and all that <coughs> stuff. But um, and our music kind of helped him to kind of mm -hmm. keep his spirits up, so to speak. And um, he uh, he said it was like the the thing that kind of kept him going. And then. Uh, and he gave me some gifts and also a picture of his newborn son, you know, that he thought he would never have. You know, he thought he was going to die, but he overcame the, the sickness and the disease. And uh, he's now super healthy and looked great and super happy. And uh, so he gave me a picture of his son to, to keep. So I have it in my bunk and uh, it's so beautiful. He was such a, an amazing guy, you know, and uh, it's, you tend to forget those kind of things, you know, that music is, I know exactly what music does to me, you know, mm -hmm. how much it means to me and how much music is a form of comfort and something I always look forward to when I feel shitty or, you know. Same here. Yeah, and, but I, I never kind of think that our music would be that mm -hmm. to someone else, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to, yeah. to wrap your head around, but sometimes you get right reminded of that and it's, uh, it's an amazing thing, I, I love that. So you believe in the healing power of music? I don't, I don't know, like whatever makes you feel good, you know, and uh, if uh, if really angry, depressing music from Sweden is your thing, then fine. <laughs> you know. um, what does art mean to you? Art, I mean, it's something that just sparks the imagination, you know, and uh, gets your uh, um, mind working, you know, and that's what I love about it. Like, um, <coughs> Art could be anything, obviously, but it's just it's something that is created, it's something that's created out of nothing, that just springs from your own mind, and I, I mean that's that's an amazing thing. I mean, and we're the only species on the planet who can do that, you know. Mm. And um, I mean, sometimes you you get nothing out of like watching the world and listening to something, but sometimes it's super profound and you life changing. So it's so cool and individual, and I. I, I'm, I love it. I mean, it's just such a super, super cool thing that we get to do, like as a species, to do, to kind of create something that will uh, affect someone else, you know, and uh, inspire someone else. Really. Let me congratulate on the last album, Atoma. Thank you. It's at Atoma or Atoma? Atoma. Atoma. All right. Uh, are you happy with the reactions? Oh yes, it's been incredible. Like um, we didn't, you know, it's always you don't really know what to expect. So, like we. Um, we knew we were onto something good, and we knew that we liked the songs. But it's like, oh, is this gonna go over well? Is it too? I don't know. Like, is it too much? Too little? To what? What is it? Like, we don't. We don't know because you're so into it. You know, the process of writing. Um, but the reviews were awesome. The sales have been incredible, and um, we play six songs, I think, <coughs> the new album every night, mm -hmm. and no one complains. So um, that's the best review <laughs> we could ever get. You know. Um, no, so it's it's been awesome, and I love playing these new songs live. Uh, they go over really well, and uh, it's yeah. The only downside is uh, we're gonna we're not gonna see home for uh, <laughs> a lot this year. It's gonna be mm -hmm. constant touring. What's your favorite song to play live from the new record, Ooh, or in general? Know. From the new record, I think right now it's Forward Momentum. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and it's it's the most challenging one, and that's why I like it. Mm -hmm. And in general, from the previous records. I don't know. Like, I love doing like Final Resistance. I love doing through smudged lenses every night on that. I love that. It just keeps so intense. Uh, but it changes all the time. You know? Some some songs you are so comfortable with, it's like you can do it in your sleep. But there are some some songs really require you to mm -hmm. stay on your game. And I, I, I tend to kind of like the more challenging songs. You are one of the founding members of the Dark Tranquility, so you have been in the band for more than 20 years now. Uh, what, what, is, what is the thing that keeps you on this path? I think since we started the band when we were 14, 15, something like that, um, and music totally changed our lives, you know. Mm -hmm. Me and Nicholas started the band, and then Anders came in, and Martin and Anders. And it was everything to us. Like the music was absolutely everything. Like talking about music, trading demos and tapes, and uh, collecting vinyls and you know CDs, whatever, uh, was everything. Like that's all we did, you know. 
um, and all of our friends were the same, you know, mm -hmm. in other bands, and that's we. It became such a huge part of our identity that um, I don't, I don't like. It, we forgot everything else, like school, sure, yeah, we do that. Like, but other friends, no, it's just all the metal he heads, you know, in our in our part of Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. That's all I ever met, you know. Those were the only guys I hung out with, and it was such a really close knit group, you know, that that we st and we still hang out, you know, mm -hmm. all of us. And <coughs> it just became um, an incredible, huge part of our lives, you know. And and in that way, I, I I don't know what to do without it. Like if I wasn't in a band, like if we, if we didn't tour and Chris, like what, what the hell would I do? You know, this is all I know, basically. You know, sure I could do anything, but this is such a big part of our of who we are. You know, um, and it it would be just I don't know, it's just weird thinking about uh, life without it. You know. Um, so of course, like we, we've had our ups and downs, and like you mm -hmm. know, you question yourself, like why are we really doing this? Like why am I on the other side of the planet where I, when I should be home with my family, stuff like that? But you, sometimes you know you need to kind of balance that and rationale it mm -hmm. to yourself. Um, it's um, I don't know, like it it keep and it's still so much fun, I and mean, I think. We we always like we sometimes talk about motivation. Like, what is the motivation? Like, what, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. And and it's definitely not for the money, you know. <laughs> and uh, and it's not for it's not like ooh fame, whatever. Like, it's because we love performing. We love being on stage. We love to you know entertain an audience, you know, and and, um, and to kind of get that kind of um, mutual feeling, you know, like. We, we pour our hearts into our music and then you know then we display that in front of people and they will show their support equally back and that, that kind of um, community is is amazing to me and, and sure like sometimes like when you're on tour for for weeks and weeks you feel super shitty and tired and you just want to go home but then you're on stage and you see like a crowd you like goes nuts for, for the stuff that you've done and everything changes all of a sudden it becomes the best day of your life that kind of thing. so I think that that kind of euphoric feeling you get like from a perfect show it's, it's, um, it's better than <laughs> most other things in life and it's, um, that's what keeps us going I think. Mm -hmm. and what was the greatest lesson you learned as an artist or what did it to you this music and this band, uh, spiritually, personally. When we started, it was all about we. We figured like originality was everything. Like mm -hmm. we wanted always to do what no one else had done. That kind of thing. Like never copy anything. Never kind of. So whenever we wrote something that we felt like, oh, it's a little bit like this, or mm -hmm. it sounds kind of like Tiamat, it sounds a little bit like Creator or something like that, and we go like, oh, then immediately we throw it away. Mm -hmm. So it was all all. Everything was about kind of being different from anyone else, as, like as far <coughs> away from every every other band that we could make. You know? uh, so that that's why Scandinavian sort of sounded the way it does mm -hmm. because it we didn't really know what we were doing, but we knew what we didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but you succeeded. Yeah, well, it's so I guess like trying hard to to just do something different is uh, has been. What has kept us going, you know, for for a long time. I don't know about lessons. Like I don't know. One of our mantras was also like, if if we like it, like if the five or six of us mm -hmm. love it, eventually people will get it. Even though they don't get it now, but eventually things will happen. And uh, so it was never about kind of pleasing someone else or making sure like most amount of people get into uh, the stuff that we're doing. It's just a matter of like if we're fine with it, if this is a great song and if we all agree that this is awesome, fine. Then eventually, you know, mm -hmm. people will come. You know, and I kind of love that, and I love the way that our progression, like, has, um, is constantly growing. But it's not like overnight, or it's not like it's, it's not quick like that. It's just a steady growth, and I like that. Mm -hmm. 
if you should form a metal band without any distortions, guitars and bass guitars, what kind of instruments would you use? How would you arrange that? What? A metal band? No, no. Without guitars, bass guitars and all these. I mean, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm really into like electronic music and like, uh, more, of, more kraut rock, that kind of stuff. So maybe something super heavy, like body electronic, like just drone. Instrumental, hopefully, and just meditative and uh, and super dark. I, I I I love that kind of stuff. So that's probably what I would do. And what would you do if there was no music in your life? How would you express yourself? Ooh. I don't know. Um, I would probably write. You know, mm -hmm. just write for for magazines or something like that. I've done that quite a bit. Like. Uh, Years ago, just write articles about about music <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but than that, I, I probably I would probably work in like video games, mm -hmm. like something like with art and video games and or storytelling or something like that. Mm -hmm. I really love that. So that would probably be that. that, would, that I would love to do that, <laughs> but now I don't have any time. Do you have a hobby besides music? Many. I, um, I think my main one, apart from video games, is uh, is brewing beer. Mm -hmm. so I brew my own stuff, and, and it's it's something that I, that I picked up a couple of years ago and started doing. And it's fascinating, and it's such a so one of those hobbies that you can never get enough of. And of course, like the end result is great because you can get drunk in your own supply. <laughs> and um, and it, it's such a geeky thing, and I have many friends who are doing it as well. And so we trade recipes and, and stuff like that. And online, I, I'm in contact with a lot of brewers, and um, so it's it's fascinating. Like beer is definitely one of my biggest passions. This is horrible, by the way, but um, <laughs> but it's canned anyway. Yeah, but it's um, so that's uh, the thing. so we we made our own beer, uh, the Dr. Quill, the Atoma beer. Mm -hmm. um, it came out a month ago in Sweden. Which is an amazing, amazing stout. And uh, when I get home, I'm gonna brew another beer together with Peter and uh, um, from uh, In Flames. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do a beer that's gonna be really so that I really look forward to. What's your favorite kind of brew? Um, West Coast IPAs, mm -hmm. American. That's my that's my favorite. I think mm -hmm. if I have to choose, but I love everything. And do you have a favorite country when it comes to beer? America. America. Without a doubt, I yeah. think the Czech Republic or something. The Czech Republic is great, but it's it's mostly the same kind of beer everywhere. It's good pils, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. And I mean, Pilsner Girl is is maybe the best beer in the world mm -hmm. to me, or to everyone else it should be. But um, but in terms of variety and like, and just uh, I don't know, like craftsmanship, it's America is, is without a doubt the best because you can. You can go, we can do one month of touring and never drink the same beer twice. Mm -hmm. You can always find something new, fantastic everywhere. It's, man, I love it. Mm -hmm. If you could summon a historical person and a mythical creature for a chat, who would you pick and why? Mm -hmm. Historical figure mm -hmm. and a mythical creature. A mythical creature. Well, maybe, I mean, he's not historical, but I would love to hang out with uh, Christopher Hitchens. With an atheist and a, and a provocateur, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> he died a couple of years ago, but he, um, <clears throat> him and Richard Dawkins were kind of like the forefathers of like, like really like pushing atheism um, to the world. And I, he was such a fa brilliant, brilliant, fantastic dude. And I, I read all of his books and I've seen all of his talks and all that stuff and uh, he was also an alcoholic so I would have loved to drink and you know have, have a couple of beers with him and mm -hmm. just pick his brain about things that would be amazing mythical creature figure Gandalf come on that would be pretty cool just hang out with Gandalf and have him tell stories mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that would be cool what do you think about religions it's the um, uh, most evil thing in the world, I think. It's just a word. It's like something that is absolutely unnecessary. 
It used to be a reason for religion because there were no laws or governments or mm. anything like that. But now we there's no purpose. It's it's indoctrination of young people. It's that's that I find the most agreeing. Sure, you can believe whatever you want, fine. But this organized religion, I think, is horrible. It it holds the world back. It doesn't propel it forward. It <clears throat> it. Um, it, kind of, it doesn't answer anything, it just gives you false answers to questions you don't understand. Mm. Um, and it, uh, it's, it's something that I, I've never understood. Like even when I was a kid, I was like, always questioning, like, what, what, why? Because of course, like, Sweden is kind of like Christian, but it, mm. nobody really cares, but you go to church anyway, just because your parents want you to. And, but, and then I asked my parents, like, what, do you really believe this kind of stuff? And they said, yeah, uh, why not? It's like, what? But why? Like, why would you? You know, that, I, I don't get it, you know? And I went to kind of Bible school and stuff like that, and I was always questioning, like, what is this? Like, sure, nice stories, but no one can take this seriously. What people do? And um, it's, it, it's horrible. It seems like, I don't know, like something that was made up 3,000 years ago, like, and we're still kind of conforming to the rules that, that were set up by them. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Can I ask a few political questions? Sure. <clears throat> uh, what are your thoughts on this mass immigration that Europe is facing at the moment? I mean, we we we, we take in a lot of immigrants in Sweden, mm -hmm. um, and it's tough for us. I mean, it's hard. Like, it's hard to to make like to welcome all these people and, uh, and give them homes and places to stay and and, and all that stuff and education. And so. So it's it's difficult, but of course we do it because we're human, you know. Um, these people need help, you know. And they're fleeing from like a horrible, horrible situation. So um, so we do our best to to kind of open up our homes and our communities and our cities to to people. Um, but it feels like we're not doing enough. But. We are really struggling, and of course, this causes a lot of friction in in, the, in our country. A lot of people hate it, and a lot of people want us to do even more. Um, but these things have always always happened in one way or another. Like in, in Sweden, back in the a couple hundred years ago, we were super poor, and everybody fled to America. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, we will do the same. We will be welcoming we, because we have Sweden is a is a fantastic country. We have a lot of means. We have a Everything works and just come on over. Like, mm -hmm. take part in, in what we have. But, but it, it like the integration is of course difficult. But, um, but it's something that has to happen. I mean, of course we have to help out our fellow <laughs> men. You know, come on. Do you feel the society more divided since the immigration? Without a doubt, it's horrible. I hate it. I hate people who are so narrow-minded and um, scared of anything that is new and different and something that maybe they feel will affect their own lives, you know, because people are ignorant and territorial and stupid. Um, and that's, you can, you can really tell, like even, even people I kind of trusted before are now showing off their really, really, uh, like the, the worst side, you know, to, mm -hmm. and I, so I, it's really frustrating. I've been writing about it a lot because it just makes me so sad, you know, I, I thought we could be better than this. You know, you, I know you can tell everywhere, like in France and Germany, like people are so scared of the immigration thing that it doesn't make any sense. And do you have any concerns when you're touring because of the terrorist attacks? No, no. I mean, statistically, that it's beyond insignificant. So of course not. No. I mean, it's, you can think about it, but it doesn't make any sense. I mean, the fear is is, is the purpose of terror. So why give in to that when it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. You're m I'm more likely to become president of the United States than to be killed by a terrorist attack. <laughs> Statistically. Mm. Yeah. Besides the immigration and uh, the terrorist attacks, the European Union is facing also more challenges, the Brexit and the economical mm -hmm. problems and stuff like that. Yeah. What are your thoughts on all these things? And what do you think about the European Union? I, I, I can't say I, that I know enough about it to, to really have a um, an opinion that matters, but uh, for me, I mean, sticking together and like um, keeping like a union 
that is a good thing. It's been great for Sweden ever since we joined in wherever it was. I don't know, 96 or 97. Yeah. Um, and it's a good thing to keep st stick together and not be separated. And come on, like I, I, I don't get it. Like Brexit was, it just seemed ill informed. And at the same, and uh, and again, I mean, it's it's all based on fear. Like I don't want <coughs> other people in here. We want to stick it to our own, and we are afraid of everything else. Mm. Let's vote to to exit the union, so that doesn't happen anymore. So it's all fear of immigration, and it makes no sense. To so uh, the, I think the European Union is a, is a good thing, and we should uh, we just keep getting stronger together mm -hmm. instead of uh, like separating. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with France because they're it's an important country to the EU. Mm -hmm. So you're not afraid of Swexit, for example? I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But who knows? I mean, there, there are definitely um, things happening in Sweden that, that where people would like that. I don't think they're in, in a majority by any stretch of the imagination. All right. You have provided session vocals for many different bands. Who is on your bucket list to work with? Oh, I don't really look for for it. You know, it's not like I oh I want to do this, I want to do this. I mm -hmm. I get asked and I, if it's a good band, if it's something some like a band that I really like or someone I know, um, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I you know it's nothing like I don't think of myself as a Yes, book. It's not like oh, I want to do this or this. Mm. It's just if it happens, it happens. Um, but I've done, done a few cool things. I think like some fun projects, you know, that I like. And um, but mostly it's just friends who people I've been in contact with for for a long time. Mm -hmm. Ask me like, oh, do you want to do like just this little chorus, whatever? It's like, Fine, let's do it. Mm. If you could pick the bands for Dark Tranquility tribute album, who would you like to hear on that CD? There's there's a tribute, not a really tribute album, but it's only with Italian bands. I think it's weird, and they're pretty good. Um, I don't know. Maybe all my friends' bands like The Haunted and At the Gates and Flames and Soulwork and um, that kind of thing. That would be kind of cool. Like all Swedish bands, like just swapping songs with cover each other or stuff like that. That would be kind of fun. Um, other than that, it would be cool, like like an electronic band or something like that. Like Depeche Mode would do, do it. Something like that. that would be kind of cool too. What do you go? Yeah. <clears throat> right. Last few questions. Please name your five favorite albums of all times. <laughs> <laughs> five favorite albums of all time. Uh, let's see. Twenty One Twelve by Rush. Close to the Edge by Yes. Grace by Jeff Buckley. Hebris by Engla Gord and uh, maybe, oh fuck, In the Wake of Satan, King Fred. What's the meaning of life? 42? <laughs> 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 no, um, I, I, there is no meaning. Mm. I don't think so. Like I, well, the, 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 there's no purpose and there's no meaning, but uh, all we can do is um, inject meaning into it mm -hmm. um, and for me that that is that just have fun enjoy myself have as much fun as possible um, be a responsible parent um, and uh, just like, have as much fun and do all the things that you, it's, it's possible to do you know in a short period of time how would you summarize your philosophy do you have a motto no Drink beer, maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't. Um, no, I don't. I just. I try not to plan too much. I try not to kind of um, look too far into the future and just like enjoy the moment and just mm -hmm. enjoy it. You know, whether it's just staying home, like hanging out with the family, or, or going nuts and uh, on the other side of the planet. It's mm -hmm. uh, just have as much fun as, as possible, we try to learn as much as possible, we try to figure out things about the world and how it works as much as possible, just, I don't know, like, knowledge is it's out there, so you just take part in it as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Do you have any message to your fans? Well, we're, we're just incredibly grateful that we get to do this still, like, it's, 
it's an amazing thing. You know? After 27 years, we can still mm. travel the world and, and people come out and hang out with us and, and watch us. And it's awesome. So I'm just incredibly grateful. So thank you. Thank you for the interview and for the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Good cheer, man.